Let's get that on the calculator. And Cassandra, what mode does everybody have to be in? Have to be in radian mode. Your calculus is going to fall apart if you're in degree mode. We can have a conversation about the why later. What? At least fix three, not float. No float. No float. The window we had yesterday, I think the X min X max was zero to seven. And our Y min Y max was negative 100 to 100. Pretty good? Yes. We've got this graph showing up. Okay, Janae, I realize you and Jessica and Jaylee may be picking up, catching up a little bit. So the problem that we ran into yesterday is I wanted to find the acceleration the second time the particle comes to rest. And so we like we found that second root. You guys probably have this on your calculator, right? And I thought was it like 6.283? If you don't have it, make sure you go through the steps and get it back. Josue doing a great job. The way that you would save it, uh oh. What you need to do, Josue, is click on just the 6.283, so it's highlighted, and then it was VARS store VAR. So it was VARS. And then I think yesterday we were calling it J. It doesn't have to be J, it could be whatever you want. But the important thing is, you better tell me what, how you say it. Brianna, what's up? Okay, hold on, see what happens there. Cannot ex I swear I actually did this this morning at home because I did not want to ever All right. All right. So click on that. Bar. Okay. Store bar. And so it should say the bar in front. Okay, and then pick something. Pick a letter. You B. Got the note for note. Or C. Okay. C. J. Okay. Whatever, whatever you want. C for Cassandra because it's her, her birthday. Sounds good to me. Okay, so C. C for Cabrera and Puso. C. But the important thing is that you have to tell me on your paper what C is. C is the 6.2832 hit out. You know you've done it right, it shows up in bold. Okay? And here's where things fell apart. I did not know this until yesterday. My apologies, I should have tested this out. The goal yesterday, we were trying to find the acceleration at this point, right? I wanted the derivative at this point. And what you guys were doing, we were doing the derivative on this screen. So we were doing menu. Analyze, and then option five for dy dx, and then I told you guys to just hit like C or just hit J, mm -hmm. and we were getting all sorts of numbers. That feature doesn't work on the graph. So let me say that again. This shortcut thing that we're doing is saving the 6.2832 as C. That's fine, but your calculator will not accept C as the input when you find the derivative. So let's see if we can all get the same answer here. So menu, analyze graph, dy dx, and when it says position, type in the number. Don't just hit C, it won't work. So type in 6.2832. Okay, she's over here. See me a quick thumbs up. Are we getting 122.6358? Does it make sense that that answer is 122.6358? Maybe you wouldn't have guessed 122, but there is something you would know for sure. There's something you should know for sure. There's something you know for sure about the derivative at this point. What do you know for sure? The derivative at this point, because this is what we're finding. The derivative is going to be positive because? Because um, is increasing. The function, the velocity function is increasing. Is everybody okay that the derivative must be positive? Okay. And everybody's getting 122? Okay. So here's, here's the switch. 
Okay, what I want you to do, Josue, I want you to hit, um, oh, you're using the, the my documents on the right, aren't you? Okay, so I want you to add a page. So do control, add page, and then add a calculator page. For everybody else, if you're not in my documents, maybe you are on like the left side of the screen, you should just be able to hit this little toggle button and it switches you between calculate and the graph screen. Okay. We can find derivatives here too. Hit menu. So menu. Where are you going to go? Calculus. Calculus. What are we going to do? Numerical. Numerical derivative. So do that. It says the variable, like our function is a function in terms of x. It asks you for the value. Where do we want to find the derivative? Try typing in the C or whatever you saved it as. It should work here. So type in C, then hit OK. And now look at that beautiful notation. You're saying I'm taking the derivative with respect to x. The only thing that's missing, the only one thing that's missing, is what the, what's the function? So what's the function? It's f1 of x. You need the parentheses. So f1 of x, evaluated at x equals c, hit enter. <coughs> the same 122.635 from before. So I don't know, I didn't know this yesterday, but apparently that store command and using the variable only works here. It doesn't work on the graph screen. Are they mostly okay? Jeff. Okay, I'll check that out in just a little bit. Here's what I want you guys to do. I want you guys to get a lot of practice with the physics. So you've got the cups in the middle of the table. Miguel, why don't you move so that you've got a partner? Do you mind working with Melissa and Jaylene? Actually, let me ask that question the right way. Melissa and Jaylene, do you mind working with him? You do mind. <laughs> you don't mind. He's a good looking young man, but go on over, work with the lady. All right, you've got 15 minutes with this new physics problem. It's the one that has a picture of Super Cat. <coughs> what? Okay. It's the new one. It's the one that you picked up on the way in today. You've got the next 15 minutes. Your goal is to complete A, B, C, and D. If you need help, let the cups do the talking. Josue, if you want to join the group as well, that would be great. I'm looking for great notation. I'm looking for good graphs. And I've already said I can't stay for tutorials tonight, right? Okay. Is this on? Okay, so it's getting a really awkward picture of me right now. Yeah, okay. If you guys don't mind, I'm going to put the camera over here. Here we go. Oh my god, I love this new tripod. Oh, hello. Sorry about that. Mastering the number line test, that's what I picked up Monday. Simplify what? It was titled Simplify. This one? The axes. I printed it. I printed it on Sunday when I graduated. Okay? Did you go from zero to 3.5? Yeah. Right, good. So make sure you're in radian mode. Check your window. Get a good window. Yeah, it's not great. Zero.
It's broken. It's broken. <laughs> okay, so what's your window? Zero to three point five. Okay, so it's not that it's broken. My window is different. If you look on my y-axis, I'm going from negative twelve to twelve. You're going from negative one hundred to one seventy. Now, what was happening is you were stretching out your graph so much that it was getting really close to the x-axis. Friends over here, how are we looking? B of 1.5, negative 3.361, I love it. And T is 1.5 hours, the velocity is decreasing. Oh, now that I don't know. And T is 1.5 hours, the velocity is decreasing at a rate of that. One of these I love, one of these I don't. I know, I know, I know. Which one? The first one, you don't like it. Because? Because it's not decreasing. It's, that's the velocity at that point. Right. The first one is just asking, not a calculus question. It's just saying, what is the velocity of 1.5? There's no prime here. It's not a, a rate of change. 
It's just what is the velocity? The velocity is negative 3.361. And is this one right at t equals 1.5 super is accelerating at a rate of 0.43 miles per hour? You are correct to say that. It was a little scary that you jumped to the word accelerating. There's nothing wrong with that. The better explanation would be at t equals 1.5. What's the second? What's happening? At t equals 1.5 hours, what's happening is something's changing. The velocity. The velocity. How is it changing? It's decreasing. So at t equals 1.5 or at 5 hours, the velocity is decreasing at a rate of. Negative seven point eight four three. No, it's just seven because you already. Oh, because I. What? Why? What? Because I already said uh, decreasing. There you go. You've already said decreasing. Please don't say it again. Seconds. Juanco, you okay? <laughs> So technically, if we were to say something is like, if it was a positive number, we were to say it's decreasing at this negative number. Yes, but my God, why would you ever choose to do that? Please don't choose to do that. Or it's just there. That's okay. You haven't said anything inappropriate, right? No, of course not. Not yet. Way to, way to be there. Is there? Yep. Wait, <laughs> small, but scary. <laughs> <laughs> I read. Let the small win. I read small, but Good doctors know when to call for a consult. In my doing things right. I don't know. I would never talk about you. Guess who's better in this class? <laughs> uh, because you had to do it. I saw you. <laughs> I saw you eating. A, B, C, and D, keep it coming. Acceleration is the same as D over B, right? Does that mean the so it's basically uh, this what, where is it right here when the velocity is down? Does that mean the relative The cat has a negative velocity. But it's talking about the derivative, but this, just the this is just the function. This is just the function. It backs up the good old days. So we have to find the derivative. Thing. The velocity is negative. Because the it says when the velocity is negative. Wouldn't we have to find the derivative of the, like, the minimum point? Is that what you were saying? I think, I think she's... Uh, I don't know what I was saying. Velocity. You're just saying, right? If there's a relative... Okay, this is what I was saying. This is what I was saying. By when the velocity... Like, quote, unquote, when the velocity is a minimum, does that mean... Does that mean we got to look for the relative? I think so. So if the velocity is a negative, what does it not show? I think when we see the height, we find the weight, we find the minimum. Do you see where you're going by calling it out? Yeah, you find the derivative. So don't you want to see it? Why not? Irene, why don't you do it? She already did it. Do your tiny friends over here. Wait, so what are we doing? What do we have to do for this one? Dang, Irene, squeeze it so. Oh, I thought it was that one. I mean, can you help me?
Did she get redo? I did do it. I did I got negative 1.3547. Wait, so that one is right? Hold on. I got 2.4142. So, wait, what exactly do we have to do on this one? Yeah. Um, I got negative zero. I think it's a good so I'm just looking for a number with you. I'm not looking for a number. All right. So let's get back over here. Okie dokie. Cynthia, you're back in charge of the camera. Okey dokey, let's book you. So, part A was just sketch a graph, and from what I've seen, everybody has a good graph. And we ran into some problems, and those have all been resolved, right? B of 1.5 should be negative 3.3613. Yes. Okay, and hopefully your explanation is that time t equals 1.5 seconds. Her velocity is negative 3.3613 meters per second. We're okay? So if velocity is negative, I want to get some hands on this. What does that tell you about the height? Velocity is negative. Miguel, what do you know? Uh, going down. Like think, think about the cat, right? Like when you guys studied physics last year with Tarek, velocity could either be positive or it could be negative. What Jessica told me earlier is that positive velocity meant you like you were going forward, negative velocity meant you were going backwards. That's not what SuperCat is doing. If the velocity is negative, what's SuperCat doing? Going down. She's going down. down. So I would say that the height is decreasing. So these are just some physics facts I want to make sure that we're clear with. So if height, if velocity is negative, height is decreasing. If velocity is positive, what's happening? Height is, is increasing. Height is increasing. True. Velocity is equal to zero. Is there a risk? Height is there a risk? Maximum height? Constant. Maybe. Constant. Maybe. What do you know about the cat? Always not. If the velocity is zero, what's the cat doing? It's not moving. The cat is at rest, is what we would say. Okay, so you say the, the cat is at rest. Another way to say that, the height is constant. Okay, for those of you that are not feeling super comfortable with this, I hope we're getting all of this captured. Okay. If I ask you to find dv dt, if I ask you to find the derivative of the velocity with respect to time, what is that? We talked about this yesterday. Derivative of velocity with respect to time. Alejandro, what do you know? Uh, any acceleration. Okay, what you guys came up with yesterday, like we played around with the units, the derivative of velocity is acceleration. So here's what I want to make sure that we've got clear in your notes. You've got velocity and you've got acceleration and there is a derivative relationship here. If I ever ask you to find the derivative of velocity, you're going to tell me that the derivative of the velocity is acceleration. acceleration because acceleration measures how velocity is changing. 
we okay with this thought from physics last year? Yeah. Acceleration is a measure of how velocity is changing. We go. So in this case, uh, you could think about it like big F is V, and then F1 would be A. I think I know what you're talking about. You're thinking about like that derivative chain that we yeah. had where it was like big F, little f, f prime, f double prime. Good thoughts here. So velocity, if I take the derivative of velocity, I get acceleration. But velocity is a measure of how height changes. So if my original function is height, the derivative of height is velocity. That f F prime, F double prime chain that we would study can be applied to height, velocity, and acceleration. Because velocity is a measure of how height changes over time. Acceleration is a, is a measure of how velocity changes over time. You're kind of okay? So, here's the question for you all. On what interval, based on this graph over here, on what interval is the cat's height decreasing and acceleration positive. I'll give you a minute to have a conversation with folks around you on this one. So what did I say about height? I want height to be decreasing. <laughs> We've got the graph of velocity in front of us. All right, let's close it out in five, four, three, two, and one. So just like all the problems that we did with like F, F prime, F double prime relationships, and you had like the graph in front of you, same thing here. You've got the graph of velocity, and I'm asking you when is the height decreasing? If the height is decreasing, how am I going to figure that out using my velocity graph? Jaylene, how are you going to do it? Your height's decreasing. What does that mean about your velocity? If the height is decreasing, the height of the cat is going down. What do we know about velocity? It's going to have to be negative because height, if I take the derivative, I get velocity. If for velocity, I take the derivative, I get acceleration. So height is decreasing means velocity is going to be negative. But acceleration is positive. What does that mean about the velocity? Close way, acceleration is positive. What do you know? Then I need, is everybody okay with that? Right, if acceleration is positive, then the function above it, which is velocity, must be velocity is increasing. So my question to you all is, when is the velocity negative and increasing? Alejandro, where is that going to happen? From 2.414 to 3. From 2.414 to 3. Is that this guy down here? Yeah. Up to this guy over here? Yes. Right? I can see it. I can mark it on the, on the graph and I can say, oh, this is where velocity is negative and velocity is decreasing. And all I need now is just use your calculator skills to get it for me. Okay, so let's get those values. Make sure you get them on there. Good. So we've got a minimum at 2.4142, so I'm going to say that's 2.4142. <laughs> and we're increasing until we hit that next root, which is three parentheses or brackets. Either. Either or. I need velocity to be negative, though, and this is where you need to be careful. Oh, right. If velocity is negative, if I put brackets here, 
we run into a problem. Who sees it? What's the problem? Brianna, what's the problem? Um, because 3 is a root and it's not a negative number, so you can't have a bracket. Right. At time 3, the velocity is not negative. The velocity would be equal to 0. So I'm going to have to go from 3, from 2.414 to, I guess I could do brackets or parentheses here. But on the 3, it's going to have to be parentheses. Well, mostly okay. This really is like the big idea. The height, velocity, acceleration chain. Think, like Miguel said, F, F prime, F double prime. Alejandro. Uh, so, hey, Abel, sorry. <laughs> so going back to what you said about like the brackets and the parentheses. Yep. So 3 can't be a bracket because of the fact that it's not decreasing? Because what we said is that velocity is negative. We used the strictly negative here. Mm -hmm. So that's why at 3, if I look at the graph, I have a root which is equal to zero, not negative. Are we good? All right, so I want to get some more practice here. So we're going to skip past E, and I want to look at part F. Part F, the question says, using the graph of the velocity function, sketch the graph of the acceleration. <clears throat> I want a sketch. I want a hand-drawn sketch of acceleration. When you're done with your sketch, Feel free to do it on the calculator. Give me a minute or two to see what you can do. <coughs> so, Janaya, how are you going to sketch the acceleration function of what you have in the last What do you know about the connection between velocity and acceleration? velocity graph. Acceleration is the derivative of velocity. Okay. So, look at the velocity graph. What do you know for sure about acceleration? Right, so what do you know about acceleration? From here until <laughs> Until this 2.4, what do you know about the acceleration? It has to be. Because velocity is decreasing, acceleration is negative. Over here. At 2.4, what's true about acceleration? Plus, wait, if you could hold on just a little bit. Just hit escape. So at this 2.414 the minimum, what do you know about the acceleration? Do Not a point of inflection. My velocity graph has a horizontal tangent line here. So the acceleration. It's a root. And then after this point, my velocity graph is increasing, so the acceleration graph is positive. All right, so if all is going well, your sketch, here's the thing that I'm looking for. When the velocity has a horizontal tangent line, your acceleration is going to have to have a root. On this interval here, the velocity is, what's it do? Negative decreasing. Velocity is decreasing. So acceleration is negative. negative. We're going to be below the x-axis. On this interval, the velocity is positive. So the, I'm sorry, velocity is increasing. So acceleration is positive. 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 Good. So you've got your sketch. Let's wait. Take us through the steps for graphing the, the acceleration function. So we start with F2. Uh oh, double equals just one. Right, it's the templates button. Give me the derivative with respect to x. And you want the derivative of the original function f1 of x. Just give me a quick thumbs up. Does that match what you've got on your screen? Somewhat, mostly. Okay, Cynthia, can, what's up? Can we also just. Uh Except you're using derivative rules that you don't know yet. You're u actually you're using the ones that you know incorrect. Incorrect. All right. So we've got 
height, we've got velocity, we've got acceleration. There was one more physics concept, one more, only one more, that you guys learned last year with Tark. Speed. There's something that you're supposed to know about speed. <laughs> Salma, you think you remember? What do you know about speed? It's, it's the average velocity. Speed is not the average velocity, no. Speed, there's a relationship between speed and velocity. If I'm walking forward at a rate of 10 meters per second, I'd say like positive 10 meters per second is my velocity, right? I turn around and I'm walking at a velocity of negative 10 meters per second. What's my speed? Speed. My speed is, if I'm walking forward 10 meters per second, my velocity is positive 10 meters per second. I turn around, I head back at a velocity of negative 10 meters per second. My speed is still 10. The relationship is that speed is the absolute value of the velocity. Always. Speed is the absolute value of velocity. You may have said this last year that um, velocity has magnitude and amplitude. It has direction. Speed is just magnitude. You don't get direction when it comes to speed. If I'm walking forward, if I'm walking backwards, my speed can be the same. Is everybody kind of okay with that? All right, I want to get rid of the acceleration function, but careful, close way, freeze. I said get rid of it. Your finger looks like it's moving to the delete button. I want to show you guys something that you may not know on your calculator. I want to get rid of the acceleration function without deleting it. Anybody know how to do that? Alejandro, what do you do? Uh, you put tab. Okay, you hit tab. And you put the arrow up. Arrow up. And click on the check box. Click on the little check box. And then hit enter. Check box. And now it goes away. It's not deleted. You're just not using it. <clears throat> All right, so you've got in front of you the graph of velocity. I think we're on part G, maybe? Mm -hmm. part, is it part G where it asks you to sketch yes. the speed function? If speed is the absolute value of velocity, I want you to sketch by hand, please, the speed function. I won't tell you what it looks like. You're going to tell me. Mm -hmm. This way, resist the temptation to do it on the calculator for a little bit. Speed is the absolute value of velocity. If you think you've got it right, graph it on your calculator. Speed is the absolute value of velocity. Right, the values always stay positive. So if I said what's the absolute value of 6, you'd say 6 and the absolute value of negative 6. Still 6. And the absolute value of 0 is 0. What does that do to the graph? If speed is the absolute value, oh my god, are you trying to take another one of my calculus units? We'll be with you in just a little bit. Speed is the absolute value of velocity. All right, I am not seeing a lot of success with the sketches by hand. So let's do it on the calculator and see if you guys can explain what's going on. Okay, so hit tap. I want to take the absolute value of the velocity function this time. So first of all, you need to know where the absolute value bars live. Good. Any good guess? Wait, what? F2. 
the not the equal sign. No, but like uh, the the absolute value bars. The control. It's in the template. Go to the templates button. Can you put two eyes? No. Okay, absolute value. Okay, so absolute value, what are we taking the absolute value of? We're taking the absolute value of F1 of X. F1 parentheses X. Quick thumbs up if that's what your graph looks like. Okay. Here's what I want you to have a quick conversation about. You all should have been able to do that. This is not a judging statement. This is something I would expect you guys to be able to do without the calculator. Have a quick conversation. How would you generate that graph without the calculator? Look at the graph. Look at the velocity. Look at the speed. How are they different? Everything, everything is on top, so it's like making it down. Yeah. You see, this, this part stays the same, this too, because this is the only one negative, so it's like, it's going, it's the opposite. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, the absolute value just takes things that are negative and puts them in the positive. So that's why this little piece of over here just gets reflected up above. All right, so it seems like everybody is okay with this idea of absolute value just means that the part of the graph that was negative gets flipped up above. Next question. Based on the speed graph, where is the speed increasing? I want to know intervals. I want points. Tell, get me, get me that graph. Where is the speed increasing? You've got the graph in front of you. Friends over here, how are we going to figure out where the speed's increasing? Okay, you want the raw max of the speed function. Okay, so speed's going to be increasing from where to where? Everybody seems, at least from walking around, we seem pretty convinced that speed is going to be increasing from the root to the max, and then from the root until the end of the interval. All right, so over here, speed is increasing. Speed is increasing, and what's this interval? Is it one? Oh, so one's where we started, and then 2.4142. Yeah. Okay, brackets, and then speed is also increasing. What is that, 3 to 3.5? Everybody okay? All right, now for the thing, Miguel, what's up? For the, for the speed one, would that be a cusp point at the zero? For the speed graph, is that a cusp point? Yeah, we have to get the slope right. Okay, if I was asking you to find the slope at this point, you'd have to say the slope does not exist because you have a cusp point. I completely agree. Is it okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Get rid of the speed graph, please. Because this is what's actually going to happen if we're looking at a testing situation. Without the speed graph in front of you, you have to be able to tell me where the speed is increasing. Everybody with me on this? Mm -hmm. You no longer have the speed graph. You can't see it in front of you. How are we going to decide where the speed is increasing? 
Jasmine, what do you think? This is concave up. Concave up. Okay, except the problem is the graph of the velocity is concave up from here to here. And we have some place where speed is increasing and speed is decreasing. Concave up and decreasing. Concave up and decreasing, so you're making it a little bit stronger. Brianna, what are your thoughts? I said uh, increasing and negative. When, veloc when velocity is decreasing and negative? First of all, is that true? Look at the graph. We've already identified the intervals, right? It's still the same intervals. It's still the same function. From 0 to 1, is speed increasing or decreasing? Decreasing. Speed is decreasing on this first <coughs> interval. So speed is decreasing. And on this interval, the two things you can tell me about the velocity, because you can see it, you can say that the velocity is positive and the velocity is decreasing. Velocity positive and velocity decreasing. On this next interval, what's happening with the speed? Increasing. Speed is increasing, but if all you see is velocity, you've got to tell me two things that you know for sure about velocity. Decreasing. Velocity is decreasing and negative. negative. So velocity is negative and velocity is decreasing. On this next interval, speed increases or decreases? Decreases. Speed is decreasing. decreasing. Velocity? Decreasing. Velocity is two things. It's negative and we're increasing on this interval. Last interval? Speed is increasing. Velocity is positive and velocity is increasing and I think those are some ideas that you guys talked about with Tarek last year. What? It, it's been a while. All right so without looking at your notes, without looking at the graph, if you look over here man, the good looking guy in the black, the bringer of death. <laughs> Don't get me confused with Miguel. Thumb up or thumbs down. Thumb up means speed, speed is increasing, thumb down speed is decreasing. Velocity is positive and <coughs> increasing. Think about that for a second. Velocity is positive and increasing. Is the speed increasing or decreasing or no idea? Put your thumb in your eye. <laughs> Velocity is positive and increasing. Is speed increasing or decreasing? Speed is increasing. Nice. Okay, next one. Velocity is negative and it's increasing. Velocity is negative, you're below the x-axis, and your velocity graph is increasing. <coughs> velocity is negative and increasing. If you're not sure, look at the board, find an example of where velocity was negative and increasing. Velocity is negative and increasing, speed is decreasing. One more, velocity, don't look at the board. Velocity is negative and decreasing. Velocity is negative and velocity is decreasing. Speed is increasing. Okay, so I've got another way to, for you guys to think about this. Rather than saying velocity is decreasing, I want to think about something I can say about acceleration. If velocity is decreasing, acceleration is negative. negative. Instead of saying velocity is decreasing over here, I'm going to say acceleration is negative. Instead of saying velocity is increasing, acceleration is positive. Acceleration positive. This might make your life a little bit easier. Velocity is positive, acceleration is positive. What's the speed doing? Velocity is positive, acceleration is positive, speed is, speed is increasing. Velocity is positive, acceleration is negative, speed is decreasing. Velocity is negative, acceleration is negative. Velocity is negative and acceleration is negative, speed is Increasing. Velocity is negative. Acceleration is positive. Velocity is negative. Acceleration is positive. 
Velocity is negative, acceleration is positive. Velocity, what did I say? Velocity is negative, acceleration is positive, speed is? Speed is decreasing. The easy way to remember this? Anybody see it? Negative is mega positive. Negative is mega positive. Oh, you're thinking of correlations. When is speed increasing? When they both have the same sign. When velocity and acceleration have the same sign, speed is increasing. Velocity is negative, acceleration is negative, speed is increasing. Velocity is positive, acceleration is positive, speed is increasing. When velocity and acceleration have the same sign, speed is increasing. If velocity and acceleration have different signs, speed is decreasing. Okay? That's as far as I wanted us to get to. There is a little bit more that we could do with sketching the antiderivative of velocity which would be fun and great and soon not what we're going to worry about. Oh my gosh, I totally forgot about that. Sorry. Okay, before you leave, tonight's homework. Tonight's homework. There's a bunch of multiple choice problems to help you get ready for Thursday's quiz. You've already picked up the pack. Okay, one, two, four, five, six. Jasmine, I am so sorry. I, I really completely forgot. One, two, four, five, six. 8, 10, 11, and 12, 19, and 21. Okay, so sorry. Oh, I can take care of that. I've got pliers. You're getting your braces off? Yeah. Congratulations. Four years. Four years. They were that bad. I remember getting my braces off. Bye. Are you taking your braces off? It's going to feel really weird to watch. Yes, those of you that did the quiz corrections and you got it signed, I forgot to pick it up. If you could put that in the middle of the table, that would be great.